Chapter 8. These are the times. Jack grabbed Annie's hand. We're not spies, he said. He whirled around to face George Washington. General Washington, remember those words you said to your men? Jack said. You should believe them yourself, sir. What are you talking about? George Washington asked. Jack yanked the captain's letter from his bag. By the light of the lamp, he read the words the captain had copied for, for his children. These are the times that try men's souls, Jack read. But he that stands it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. The harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. Jack looked at George Washington. Even if things look impossible, you should keep going, sir, he said. The harder things seem, the greater the triumph, right? That's what you read to your men. You have to keep going for their sake. Yes, and you have to keep going for our sake, said Annie. For the sake of the future children of America, sir. As the wet snow hissed about them, George Washington stared a long moment at Jack and Annie. Finally, he put a hand on each of their shoulders. I do not know who you are, he said. I do not know. You know. I do not know how you know what you know, but I believe you. For your sake and for the future children of America, we will march on. Yay! cried Annie. Yay! said Jack softly. He sighed with relief and put away the captain's letter. Now get back in the boat, said George Washington. You must leave the fighting to us, to me and my men. Jack felt very grateful to George Washington and his whole army. They were risking their lives for all of America's children, past and future. He could barely speak. Thank you, sir, said Annie. Thank you both for telling me to listen to my own advice, said George Washington. He called to the rowers riding, waiting in the boat. Take good care of these two. George Washington climbed onto his horse. He looked down at Jack and Annie. Merry Christmas, he said. Then the commander-in-chief rode away into the stormy darkness.